A company produces calculator batteries. The diameter of the batteries is supposed to be 20 mm. The tolerance is 0.25 mm. We can think of the range of values for the diameter of a battery to lie along this line here. And this is the ideal value for the diameter of a battery. That is the value that the diameter is supposed to be, which is 20 mm. The tolerance is 0.25 mm. Um, any batteries outside this tolerance are rejected. So let's look at a range of values that are acceptable. Well, if the tolerance is 0.25, then the maximum diameter that a battery can have, or that is acceptable for a battery, is 20 plus 0.25, which is 20.25. And the minimum value that is acceptable for a battery to have is 20 minus 0.25, or 19.75. So values outside of this range are rejected. So I will highlight the rejection region. So I'm letting x stand for, x is a random variable that stands for the diameter of any particular battery. And if x is less than 19.75, or greater than 20.25, then that battery is rejected. The company has a machine that produces batteries with diameters that are normally distributed with mean 20 millimeters and standard deviation 0.1 millimeters. Here we have a graph of a normal distribution centered at x equals 20. The normal distribution is symmetrical about x equals 20. We can write it like this x follows, this, that's what its squiggly symbol means, a normal distribution with a mean of 20, mu equals 20, and a standard deviation denoted by the letter sigma of 0 0.1. This means that if we want to find the probability that a randomly selected battery has a diameter between any two values, say this value and this value, we get the area underneath the distribution between this value and this value. This will give us the probability that the randomly selected battery has values in this region here. We are going to be interested in the probability that a randomly selected battery from a large population of batteries has a diameter that's either less than 19.75 or greater than 20.25. So that'll give us the probability of rejecting that battery. So that means we're interested in the area under this normal distribution to the left of 19.75 and to the right of 20.25. Now by symmetry, these two areas are the same because 19.75 and 20.25 are, are equidistant from x equals 20. So we only have to find the area of one of these tails. And uh, to get the total area, then we just double. So let's look at the area of, how to get the area of this region here. Well, the area of this region is the probability that x is greater than 20.25. To get this probability, we need to transform this normal distribution to the standard normal distribution. So then we can use tables to look up this probability. So we will be transforming the random variable x to the random variable z, where z follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So this distribution is centered at 0, so mu is 0 for the standard normal distribution. The standard deviation is 1. That's a measure of how spread out this is. I can't really represent that so easily on a diagram. Um, the standard deviation of this distribution is 0 0.1. So this distribution is tabulated. So what we need to do is, to get, to get this probability, is to convert this value of x equals 20.25 to its corresponding z value, which is going to be somewhere over here. So the problem will turn into getting the area of this tail.
So we need to find out what this z value is that corresponds to x equals 20.25. Here is the equation for transforming our random variable x. Basically what we do is we see how far the value of x is from the mean. So we take the value of x and subtract mu. Mu is 20. And then we divide by the standard deviation. That tells us the number of standard deviations that 20.25 is from the mean. We plug in the values for x, mu and sigma and we get 2.5. So this value here is 2.5. So we want this probability here, probability that z is greater than 2.5. That's what I've written down here. And for this we go to standard normal tables. So here is an example of standard normal tables. What this particular set of tables does is give us the area to the left of Z here, under the, the area under the curve to the left of this value. So this area here is the probability that the random variable Z is less than little z. So little z stands for a particular value. Capital Z is a random variable that's normally distributed. So capital Z is all the values along here. Z stands for all these values. But little z is just a particular value. So that's how these particular tables work. Other tables are different. Um, so we're interested in the area to the right of 2.5. These tables will give us the area to the left particular value. Um, so we can start by getting the area to the left of 2.5. So let's suppose that this value is 2.5. So what we do is we read 2.5 by going down this column for the first decimal place and going across this top row for the second decimal place. So our value to two decimal places is 2.50. So we go down here to 2.5. So that's it, z to one decimal place. And we read under zero because the second place happens to be zero. So we read under this value. So the area to the left of 2.50 is 0 0.9938. So I'll just mark that in here. This blue area here is 0.9938 as we just looked up. So how do we find this white area? Well, the total area underneath any probability distribution is 1. The probability of selecting any value has to be 1 because all the values are along here. Actually, in theory, this runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. But in practice, of course, it normally doesn't. So the probability that we randomly choose a value from minus, between minus infinity and plus infinity has to be a certainty. It has to be 1. So the total area is 1. So to calculate this here, we need to work out 1 minus 0.9938. That gives us 0 0.0062. So then the probability that we reject a battery is the sum of the area of this tail and this tail here. So now we've established that this area here is 0 0.0062 by symmetry, as I said earlier. This area over here is also 0 0.0062, symmetry of the normal distribution. 20.25 and 19.75 are equidistant from the mean, which is 20. So these areas are the same. So the probability that we reject a randomly selected battery is 2 times 0 0.0062, which is 0 0.0124. Out of every 10,000 batteries produced by this machine, how many on average are rejected? Now we're interested in the expected number of batteries that will be rejected from a population of 10,000 batteries probability that any one particular battery selected 
is rejected is 0 0.0124. So the expected number of batteries rejected from a population of 10,000 is going to be 0 0.0124 of 10,000 or multiply by 10,000. So we just moved the decimal point four places. So the answer is 124 batteries. So on average, 124 batteries will be rejected from a population of 10,000 batteries. 0 0.0124 of them on average will be um, outside the tolerance levels, the tolerance values of 20.25 and 19.75. A setting on the machine slips so that the mean diameter of the batteries increases to 20.05 millimeters while the standard deviation remains unchanged. Now, according to the official solution, the assumption here is that the tolerance levels or values are not changed. So we don't actually go right adding on um, 0.25 to this new mean of 20.05 and then subtracting 0.25 from this new mean. It's assumed that the tolerance values haven't changed. So the mean has been shifted to the right, so the mean is no longer midway between these two values. So these are the same tolerance values from before. We have a normal distribution centered at this new mean of 20.05. So that's what we're assuming here. The only thing that has changed is the mean. The actual distribution is, is um, still normal with a standard deviation of 0.1. So now the distribution is centered at 20.05. The mean of a normal distribution is at the symmetrical point of the distribution. So the distribution is symmetrical, about 20.05. We want to find the percentage increase in the rejection rate for batteries from this machine. So we want to find the probability. First of all, we need to find the probability that a battery is rejected. So we want to find the probability that X, or X stands for the diameter of batteries, is greater than 20.25 or less than 19.75. So we want to find the area under the curve to the right of 20.25 and to the left of 19.75. So we want to find these two areas. Now the areas are not going to be the same in this case because these two values are not equidistant from 20.05. So we have to go and actually look up tables for both of these values. But first of all we have to calculate the Z values corresponding to these two values. So let's convert each of these X values. We use this formula here so when x is 20.25, we subtract mu, which is 20.05, and divide by the standard deviation, which is 0 0.1. We get 2, and uh, we can mark this on the diagram. So we'll be interested in getting the area to the right of 2 for the standard normal distribution. So we'll be looking up this value. Now let's look at the other value of x, which is 19.75. So we have 19.75 minus the mean. And we divide all this by the standard deviation. We get minus 3. So I can mark this in here. We don't have the symmetry now as before. The mean of this standard deviation is at the peak, 0. So we want these areas, these probabilities. Probability x greater than 20.25 is equivalent to the probability that z is greater than 2. The probability that x is less than 19.75 is equivalent to the probability that z is less than minus 3. Here is our table of z values with the corresponding probabilities as we saw before. Just to remind you, the values in the middle of this table give us the area to the left of a particular value under the standard normal distribution. 
So we're interested in this value z equals 2. If we look up z equals 2 by going down here to 2, um, to two decimal places, 2 is just 2.00. These z values are down the left column and the second place is across this top row here. So we go to 2.0 and read under 0 0.00. So 2.00 is this value here, 0.9772. That's this area in red. That's the area under the curve to the left of 2. This area is 0 0.9772. So to find the area that we're looking for, that is the area under the curve to the right of z equals 2, we just use the fact that the total area is 1. So we get 1 minus 0.9772. That's 0 0.0228. The next thing we want is the area under the normal distribution to the left of minus 3. Notice that the z values here are positive. These are the z values down this column. So how are we going to deal with this value z equals minus 3? Well, what we do is we use the fact that the normal distribution is symmetrical. So to get the area under the normal distribution to the left of minus 3 is the same as getting the area under the normal distribution to the right of plus 3. So this area here is the same as this area here. So by reading the value 3, or which is 3.00, the two decimal places, three point, we read 3.0 and read under 0 here. So we get 0.9987. That gives us the area to the left of 3 under the normal distribution. So this area here is 0.9987 this value here so to find the required area we just take this number from 1 so we get 0 0.0013 for this the area of this tail so now we can find the probability of rejecting a battery that is randomly selected from a population of batteries. It's the area under both of these tails. So it's basically the probability that x is greater than 20.25 or x is less than 19.75. So we just add these values together. 0 0.0241 is the new rejection rate. Now the old rejection rate um, was was done in the previous question. It was 0 0.0124. So notice that the rejection rate has increased from 0 0.0124 to 0 0.0241. We want to find a percentage increase. So to find a percentage increase, what we do is we take the increase which is got by subtracting these rejection rates and divide that increase by the old rejection rate or the original rejection rate which is 0 0.0124 and then multiply this by 100 to turn this fraction into percentage we get 94.35 percent 